So what is PIDS? For over 40 years, the Philippine Institute for Development Studies or PIDS has been the country's foremost socio-economic think tank. It conducts rigorous and objective policy research and analyses that help the government in crafting relevant policies, plans, and programs in support of the country's long-term vision and development goals. PIDS pursues its mandate through three basic programs research, dissemination, and outreach. Through its research program, PIDS identifies and prioritizes studies, develops proposals, and conducts research on priority areas. The results of these studies are then disseminated through different platforms, publications, online resources, PIDS Corner, Seminars, and the Development Policy Research Month or DPRM held every September. To shed light on key policy issues, the advice and expertise of the Institute's research fellows are also sought by policymakers, government agencies, private sector, and civil society. Since 1977, PIDS has completed numerous policy studies on a wide range of development topics. This brand of service has then translated to policies and programs that have improved the lives of every Filipino. Philippine Institute for Development Studies Service Through Policy Research In need of references for your research? Do you want a search engine that is easy to navigate? And do you want it free? If you are a student, researcher, or teacher looking for socioeconomic references and materials, then SERPI is for you. To access SERPI, just visit the PIDS website at www.pids.gov.ph and click the SERPI widget or type serp-p.pids.gov.ph. SERPI is an online database of socioeconomic studies and materials produced by the Philippine Institute for Development Studies and other academic and research institutions. SERPI has a wide variety of socioeconomic materials such as journal articles, books, working papers, policy notes, research papers, and newsletters. SERPI has 52 partner institutions that contribute publications to the database. SERPI has a wide coverage of materials encompassing 20 research themes. You can search by keyword or author, by publication type, by research theme, or year published. SERPI has more than 7,000 materials with full text that you can download for free. Enjoy searching! Visit SERPI now and follow us on Facebook. You may also send a message for inquiries. Oo, dapat nilang pag-aralan yung batas at polisiya para mas makita nila yung epekto at resulta nito. <sighs> Pag nanguli tayo, wala tayo may sasagot. Kaya dapat pag-aralan din natin. Oo, dapat nilang pag-aralan ng mga batas at polisiya para malaman nila kung epektibo ba ito sa karamihan o magiging problema lang. Kung walang basihan ng isang batas, basta na lamang ipatutupad at walang pulso na kinukuha sa mga mamamayan, eh, mahirap. Mahalagang isa ilalim sa masusing pagsusuri ang mga polisiya at programa ng pamahalaan bago pa man ito ipatupad. Dapat rin ipagpatuloy ang pagsubaybay o pagmonitor sa mga ito 
habang ipinapatupad hanggang sa matapos ang kanilang implementasyon. Dito pumapasok ang tungkuli na ginagampanan ng Philippine Institute for Development Studies. Ang PIDS ang siyang sangay ng pamahalaan na naatasang gumawa ng pag-aaral at pananaliksik at magbigay ng rekomendasyon sa mga mambabatas at iba't ibang sangay ng gobyerno tungkol sa mga programa at polisiya sa pamahalaan upang masigurong matugunan nito ang socio-economic needs ng ating bansa. Pag pinag-aralan, mas effective! Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Sheila. I'll be moderating this event. So while waiting, please uh, take time to read the house rules that are flashed on the screen. I'll see you at two o'clock. Thank you.
Hello everyone, a pleasant afternoon to all. I'm Sheila CR and I will be moderating this virtual event. Welcome to our weekly webinar series where we tackle development issues based on data and evidence. In today's webinar, we will discuss the importance of timely, reliable, accurate, and comprehensible weather and climate information for our farmers to assist them in making informed and strategic decisions on mitigating the impacts of disasters and climate change. And to formally open our event, may I call on the president of PIDS, who is also part of the research project, which will be presented today. Friends, Dr. Celia Reyes. Thank you, Sheila. Um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, let me acknowledge the following officials who are with us this afternoon. Uh, from the Department of Agriculture, we have Director Sonia Salguero and Regional Director Roy Abaya. Uh, we also have DTI Benguet uh, OIC Provincial Director Juliet Lucas, um, DBM Director Ahmad Usman, and from DNR, we have Director Elenida Basug and Regional Executive Director Ralph Pablo. We also have with us this afternoon Assistant Secretary Greg Pineda, Regional Director Nestor Rillon, Regional Director Janisha Ledres Jr., and Assistant Regional Director Edna Cynthia Burses from MEDA. Uh, we have DAP President and CEO Attorney Engelbert Caronan. And from PCIC, uh, we have Acting Chairman Crisologo Ignacio, VP Corporate Business Affairs Group Engineer Luther Romeo Salting, and OIC for Business Development and Marketing Department, Manuel Cortina. We also have from um, Santa Praxides Cagayan, uh, Councillor Christopher Aguirre. And from the private sector, we have Ayala Corporation, Executive Director Emmy Delara. Um, IISLA Venture CEO Jennifer Villoria and CompuTrade Technology Philippines Director Teddy Sumulong. And from the media, we have Catholic Media Network President and CEO Francis Lucas. And from the academe, we're joined today um, from UPLB Institute for Governance and Rural Director uh, and Rural Development Director Jane Reyes, and from PUP Ninoy Aquino Library and Learning Resources Center Director Marcela Figura. Uh, we also have Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University um, North La Union Campus Director Arneli Lakidan, and from UP Los Banos College of Economics and Management Department Chair Agham Cuevas. And from the CSOs and GOs and international organizations, we have DAI Global um, LLC Chief of Party Alma Porshunkula and Masaganang Sakahan. Um, Director Daniel Agustin, and finally, Villar Foundation Representative Attorney um, Tamana. So colleagues from the government and representatives um, from the academic, civil society, and the private sector, as well as viewers from our Facebook page, good afternoon to all of you, and welcome to our weekly webinar. Based on the newly published report of the United Nations Office of Disaster Risk Reduction titled Human Costs of Disasters, an Overview of the Last 20 Years, 2000 to 2019, there were 7,348 disasters recorded worldwide from 2000 to 2019. These catastrophes claimed a total of approximately 1.2 million lives and affected over 4 billion people. This gives us an average of 367 natural hazards each year, mostly floods and storms. These natural disasters have resulted to approximately 2.97 trillion US dollars in economic losses around the world. The report showed that the Philippines ranked fourth in terms of countries with the most number of disasters, next to China, the United States, and India. This makes our country one of the most vulnerable places to climate-related weather conditions. Over the years, we saw how the Philippines suffered and continued to suffer from different types of natural disasters, which are increasingly becoming more destructive. According to the Food and Agricultural Organization, the country has experienced a total of 78 natural hazards between 2006 and 2013 that brought damage to over 6 million hectares of crops, which is valued at 3.8 billion US dollars. Given this data, the agriculture sector's vulnerability to natural hazards could adversely affect our food and economic security. The decrease in agricultural yield could lead could lead to insufficient food supply, increase in malnutrition, and higher poverty levels. It's therefore important to build the resilience of the agriculture sector to cope with the negative impacts, um, negative impacts of natural disasters and climate change. 
providing our farmers with timely and accurate information on extreme weather conditions and natural catastrophes such as floods, droughts, storms, and those related to climate change is necessary to inform decision making. For instance, weather and climate information can help a farmer identify what crop is suitable to plant, when to plant, etc. This is the focus of today's webinar. Our speaker, PIDS Senior Research Fellow, Dr. Sani Domingo, will present various studies conducted by PIDS on weather and climate forecast tools that are useful not only for upland farming, but also for those who are similarly situated. In particular, Dr. Domingo will discuss some tools that aid agricultural extension workers and farmers in decision making, such as the rapid climate decision analysis and the crop climate calendar. He will also tackle various issues in relation to accessibility and utilization of weather and climate information, such as the lack of working capital to implement optimal decision alternatives dictated by adverse weather conditions, the lack of reliable phone service and power to disseminate and access the information, and the absence of forecasts translated into the vernacular or lemanized, among others. The presentation will highlight the findings of the project Action Ready Climate Knowledge to Improve Disaster Risk Management for Smallholder Farmers in the Philippines. This project follows the previous project, Bridging the Gap Between Seasonal Climate Forecast and Decision Makers in Agriculture. The project aims to respond to the information needs of small um, um, information needs of um, key decision makers involved in managing climate and weather risk of small older farmers. The research project is being supported by the Australian Center for International Agricultural Research and being implemented in collaboration with Dr. Peter Hyman of South um, Australian Research and Development Institute and Dr. Kevin Parton from Charles Sturt University in Australia. Our local partners are PAGASA, University of the Philippines Los Baños, and Agricultural Training Institute of the Department of Agriculture. PIDS has also been working closely with the Benguet State University since the project site for the PIDS component is Benguet. I'd like to take, to take this opportunity to thank Dr. Peter Heyman for joining us this afternoon. Thanks also to Ms. Perla Baltazar of the Climate Resilient Agriculture Office of the Department of Agriculture and Ms. Thelma Cinco of the Climatology um, the vision of PAGASA for accepting our invitation to serve as discussants in today's webinar. Let me also thank ASHAR, Australian Center for International Agricultural Research, for commissioning this research project to PIDS. The PIDS has regularly collaborated with Asia, particularly on research issues related to climate change and its implications to agriculture. We're grateful to Asia for the trust and we look forward to more years of partnership and knowledge generation. In closing, we look forward to hearing your insights during the open forum. Again, thank you everyone for joining us. Back to you, Sheila. Thank you very much, Mangsel. Friends, we are privileged to have with us today Dr. Peter Hyman, who, uh, as mentioned by Dr. Celia Reyes, is affiliated with the South Australian Research and Development Institute, or SRD. Uh, Dr. Peter Hyman is a principal scientist there. Um, his uh, specialization is in climate applications. Sardi is uh, at the Department of, of Primary Industries and Regions, Government of South Australia. Dr. Hyman is also an affiliate associate professor at the School of Agriculture, Food and Wine of the University of Adelaide. May I call on Dr. Hyman for his message. Peter? Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, it is really really is a pleasure to join you um, to this virtual event. So it's been such an interesting project to be involved with. Um, there are lots of ways to build resilience of smallholder farmers to the challenges of climate change. And as you all know better than me, smallholder farmers in the Philippines are some of the most vulnerable people on the planet with li limited resources and um, quite frightening uh, um, uh, changes and, and exposed to these. There's lots of things in terms of new crops, in terms of climate smart farming with um, structures to manage um, and, and so on. One of the aspects is how do we get better weather and climate information 
in ways that people can use it and apply it to their decision making. The Philippines is fortunate to have Pegasa, which has lots of has resources and is and with Pegasa modernization will have more resources to deliver information. The challenge is how does that information get to smallholder farmers and how can they use that in decision making? And the challenge is that the forecasts are not perfect um, and they're getting better, but they're not perfect. Um, somebody has said that the problem with forecasts is that they're too good to ignore, but not good enough to rely on in a simple way. And I think that that's, that's a, that presents a challenge, is, is a, and it presents a challenge in the Philippines, but also across the world. And so I just would, would want to say that um, from an ACR, um, Australian Centre for International Agriculture Research, this has been a project of sharing knowledge and sharing learning, because as you apply um, climate information to decision making in the Philippines, there's a lot we can learn in Australia about that. As we're talking about the chance of La Nina developing, um, what does that mean for different places? And what does that mean in terms of changes in risk rather than guarantees of, of things? So it's been a, um, it's been a real honor to work with uh, uh, Sonny in, in this work. Sonny who did his PhD in Australia and understands both systems and his deep knowledge of the farming system, his practical knowledge of that and, and how he then applies these advances in weather and climate to that information. So thank you for the opportunity and I look forward to being part of the discussion. Thank you very much, Peter. Before I call our um, resource speaker, may I remind you about our house rules. So for all attendees, your microphone is muted upon entry, and this is to prevent uh, background noise, but this doesn't mean that we cannot participate in the discussion. So to join the open forum, just use the chat box, which is located at the lower part of your screen. If you have a question, just type your name, your affiliation, as well as your question and uh, send it to all panelists. I repeat to all panelists, you can also send it to everyone. I will read uh, your question during the open forum. And since we have limited time, please make your questions concise. And for our viewers on Facebook, you, all, you are also very much welcome to participate in the Q&A. Just type your question in the comment section and I will read up to two questions during the Q&A. Okay, I think everyone is ready to listen to the presentation. So, um, friends, our presenter today is uh, Dr. Sani Domingo, who is a senior research fellow at PIDS. Dr. Domingo has, um, has almost three decades of extensive multi-sector technical and policy research exposure, particularly in agricultural research and development and extension, natural resource management, and um, as well, an issue, as well as an issue uh, such as a disaster like climate change and other agriculture related issues. He has also done consulting work and has led 26 research and development projects with both government and international development organizations. And uh, currently his research expertise include ecological integrity and environmental policy, technical agriculture and resource economics climate change and uh, disaster risk management. He obtained his bachelor's and master's degrees from the University of the Philippines, Los Banos, and his PhD in applied economics as a fellow of the Australian Center for International Agricultural Research of, at the Orange Campus, from the Orange Campus of Charles Sturt University, New South Wales, Australia. Friends, here now is Dr. Sana Domingo. Sani? All right. Thank you, Sheila. Thank you, uh, Dr. Heyman. Thank you, you, Dr. Reyes. So as mentioned earlier, this presentation really is a product of a multi-year effort for PIDS and so many partners. Just to mention our team members, 
would like to acknowledge, of course, our president, Dr. Celia Reyes, Dr. Aubrey Tabuga, one of our research fellows, and our research associates and analysts, Boya Tagbon, Divina Olaguerra, Anna Jennifer Umlas, Katrina May Zuluwaga, our regional partner from BSU, Rabengat State University, Doctors uh, Carlito Lorian, Sherry Lanio, Ruth Batani, and Alex Fagan, our partners from the LGU in Atok Benguet, particularly from the Municipal Agriculture Office, Lamao there and Extension Workers, Asia, the Australian Center for International Agricultural Research, for funding this initiative, and our partners from Sardi, Dr. Peter Heyman, Ronya Cooper, and from CSU. Charles Sturt University, Dr. Kevin Parton. Next slide, please. So farming in the Philippines is defined by uncertain seasons. So if you've been into the uh, nitty gritty of the sector, you've been into farming, or have you uh, studied um, agricultural productivity, both within technical and policy terms, you really, uh, see that a landscape for agriculture is full of risks. Just a few days ago, we've been experiencing um, the havoc brought about by a tropical depression in uh, Ophel. And essentially, our agricultural stakeholders have been the recipient of so many uh, uncertainties in terms of their crop, current crop, uh, cropping. So looking at, for example, agromet hazards and looking looking at the possible uh, interventions that we can provide really this is a worthwhile undertaking not only for pids but also our partners uh, sub-regionally next slide please so the presentation is broken down as follows we'll be presenting the, the project background the characteristic of our um, case study site, which is Benguet. Third one would be identifying climate sensitive decisions. Fourth one is assessing barriers to access and utilization of weather and climate information. Fifth one is our effort to co develop and co learn with our local stakeholders. And the sixth is the mapping of social networks in African communities. So this is uh, an aggregate of so many studies done for several years under this uh, very broad undertaking. So the project is premised behind the gap between the source of weather and climate information, which for the Philippines is PAGASA as the mandated institution, and the end users composed of farmers, extension workers, traders, or middlemen, and our local partners, including LGUs. So the gap between the two has to be addressed. Questions are, how is weather and climate information disseminated? What are the barriers and opportunities to access and use of weather and climate information? How do we improve decision-making on and off farm? And what is the value of weather and climate information for uh, agricultural stakeholders? Next slide, please. Again, just to reiterate, we have so many partners without whom uh, the outputs of this project wouldn't be possible. So we have Asia as the funding agency, we have SARDI, we have CSU, we have PAGASA, we have DA, we have UPLB, and our regional academic partners, BSU, MINSCAT, as well as the LGUs in Mindoro, as well as Benguet. So for PIDS, we've done work to identify climate sensitive decisions. We've done work to value the use of weather and climate information. We've also explored decisions uh, on farm and off farm, uh, including the processes by which farmers and stakeholders come up with such decisions. And we did co-learning and co-development activities with local partners, just so to develop the decision-making tools that we'll be presenting later. Next slide, please. Focus-wise, uh, we have several project sites. For PIDS, it's Benguet, focusing on upland uh, rain communities, planting high-value crops. 
for you for UPLB, it's uh, them looking at the traditional staples, rice and corn in Lindor. Um, before our midterm review for this project, we also covered Leite, but uh, we dropped that uh, eventually and focused on just two sites. So stakeholder wise, we initially looked at farmers, the LGUs, and members of the value chain. And now we have shifted on looking at, at the change agents, particularly the extension workers within our forward localities. In terms of our investigative approach, so we've been studying climate sensitive decisions related to such commodities I've mentioned earlier and related to the use of um, weather and climate information as well. So how did we do that? We went forward, engaged with local partners and tried to learn with them and develop with them the tools for decision analysis. Next slide, please. So this presentation really focuses on our Benguet study site. So Benguet, as most of you know, really is our uh, major source of vegetables for, for the country. It's the fourth biggest province in CAR, but more than half of its municipalities are poor, belonging to the fourth and fifth classes. Most of the almost half a million population of Benguet depend on agriculture, providing around 80% of the country's vegetable needs. They grow the crops based on a type one climate, meaning there is a defined wet and dry season uh, for the year. And because of that, they also encounter so many hydromet related hazards, including typhoons, frost, which is, I think, quite unique to that area, hail, which is also a bit unique, drought, heavy rainfall, flood, erosion, and landslide. Next slide, please. In terms of farming issues, upland wise, we have a lot. So, as mentioned in so many uh, literature, upland rain wet farmers are among the poorest. So aside from actually earning so little from their farming activities, they face so many issues, including penurial concerns and environmental concerns as well. Their farming activity requires huge inputs for them to be actually productive. And probably compared to the lowlands, they have more labor requirements. For example, if you're going to look at input application, um, labor requirement per se is quite huge for high value commodities. But if you, you are within the highlands, particularly in, in the Benguet area, the labor requirement is quite huge. It's multiplied probably by uh, so many folks. Climate and weather induced disasters leading to crop damages and supply chain disruptions. That's very particular for the car area when they transport vegetables on harvest and there are extreme uh, seasonal climate uh, anomalies, then most likely you'll have a very uh, limited inflow of produce coming from that area to the major uh, consumption areas in Metro Manila and uh, the nearby centers. Erosion and unsustainable cropping systems, very particular for uh, sloping and upland communities. And then they have constrained access to support. So you're going to look at, for example, government support to agricultural stakeholders within remote communities. Uh, it's much less compared to what you have in communities with uh, irrigated rice. Uh, as the main crop being produced. Next slide, please. So Benguet in terms of rainfall, so looking at uh, a multi-decade presentation here, a histogram, you'll see that well, Benguet receives not noticeably less precipitation during its dry season. However, the province has an extraordinary amount of precipitation during the rainy season with the months of July and August being the wettest. Um, I think later on, you'll see that uh, in July as well as October are the months with the most typhoon occurrences. Next slide, please. 
So Benguet's temperature is usually about 10 degrees lower compared to the lowlands. From 81 to 2010, climatological normals show mean temperatures ranging from 18.1 degrees in January to 20.8 degrees in April. So malamig pa rin. Uh, lowest temperature recorded, although not negative, was 6.3 degrees. Uh, way back in January 1961, the highest was recorded 30.4 degrees in March 1988, during the 1988 year. Next slide, please. So for seven decades, a total of 39 tropical cyclones crossed Benguet. 20 reached typhoon category, 10 tropical storms, and seven were tropical depressions. July and October had the most number of tropical cyclones within seven and eight, respectively. So this month, October, really is a critical month for agricultural producers in Benguet, as well as those um, into trading local produce. Next slide, please. So just to profile our stakeholders, we did a survey uh, among the households of agricultural producers in select communities in Benguet. And these are the, the highlights of that, that survey. Next slide, please. So most of the households reported that they are not beneficiaries of any social protection group. So this, I think, is a very big concern for not only for the, the local uh, farmers and agricultural stakeholders, but also for the government and those providing support to the communities. 80% of households experienced disaster in the past two years when we did the survey. The typhoons experienced by 74% of households and identified as the most severe weather shock. But 73% of the households were able to completely recover. So that's a good thing. Uh, that is a testament to the resiliency of uh, the farming communities within the province. Radio is still the major source of weather information among households. TV ranks second, while mobile phones rank third in terms of sources of information. So these media, uh, well, the most common weather and climate information delivered are tropical cyclone warnings. And tropical cyclone warnings, particularly uh, reports on typhoon occurrences, really are the most appreciated among the local stakeholders. Next slide, please. So the community was found to use weather and climate information and farm management decisions. That's a positive. Uh, in terms of weather and climate information, tropical cyclone warnings were deemed as the most important uh, information from Pagasa. Rainfall forecasts were also important, but uh, was seen as somewhat reliable. The community also used forecasts on temperature, uh, which is important given Benguet's uh, colder climate. The rain-fed nature of the agriculture system is also evident. Rainfall is one of the foremost considerations in decisions such as planting, harvesting, and irrigation. So essentially, um, operational tactical decisions for farming operations. Climate information as well as farm management decisions and securing credit are often dedicated to men. So that's also a gender related input uh, that we got from the household survey. So men and women have their roles in terms of decision making on farm, off farm and within households. And looking at that interaction, that dynamic between uh, the gender is really a big thing in terms of us delivering support and information. Next slide, please. Okay, as you can see here, most of the households reported that they are not beneficiaries of any social protection programs. Um, I think most of them were recipient of field health insurance. That is, I think, a big plus given the pandemic right now, but it's still not 100% coverage of field health. So there is room for improvement. And for the rest of those indicated in this slide, I think it's worth uh, going the extra mile 
for the bureaucratic actors that we have within government and the outside uh, to cover as much of the of the population in terms of social protection. So a lot of them actually were not members of uh, any social protection programs. Next slide, please. In terms of shocks, um, a lot of them experienced those in October, followed by August, iPhone wise. So this month, as I mentioned, really is, is a critical month for agricultural producers. And a good testament to that is the tropical depression we've experienced during the past couple of days. So I think even now, a lot of our localities are experiencing uh, intense rains, intense precipitation, leading to flooding, as well as uh, agromet related landslides. Next slide, please. So radio is still the major source of weather and climate information among households. Um, this probably is the easiest in terms of us augmenting that preferred source. TV ranks second, although we don't have ABS-CBN now, uh, it's still uh, a major source of information, not only for weather and climate uh, services and products, but also for other information related to uh, the critical areas of their daily living. Mobile phones uh, rank third, and probably right now, accessing the internet is also a major um, avenue where in there they get uh, the right information, the needed information for their farming activities as well as for daily decisions household-wise. Next slide, please. So males usually receive the weather information, and this probably is different in other areas, but for Benguet and the communities that we have interviewed, males um, perform such a role and probably a lot more in terms of decision-making on farm. So gender dominance probably has to be studied more and as augmenting, for example, the contribution of uh, the opposite gender, the opposite sex to the scheme of things really would help a lot in terms of our uh, progression initiatives. Next slide, please. Okay, tropical cyclone warnings is the most common type of information received by farmers, as they have mentioned, is probably as the the most practical impact in terms of their on-farm activities and decision-making. So it's rated as the most useful and most reliable as well. Flood warnings mostly seen as not useful. That's for the upland areas in, in Benguet. And rainfall forecasts rated as somewhat reliable, given that there are so many microclimates uh, in such uh, a varied terrain as what you can see in, in the car region. Rainfall and temperature forecasts are perceived to be somewhat adequate as well. Next slide, please. So identifying climate sensitive decisions, the use of climate information. So aside from the actual uh, survey that we did for select uh, communities in Benguet, we also did so many interviews, informant interviews, so many exchanges with local groups through focus group discussions. Next slide, please. And we have gathered so many inputs in terms of um, the use of climate and weather information on operational, tactical, and uh, strategic decisions related to farming. So in terms of operational decisions, rainfall is the most important consideration in farming operations. See here storage decisions, harvesting decisions, crop protection, irrigation decisions, schedule and level of pesticide application, schedule and level of fertilizer application. So basic day-to-day -day activities on farm are affected by the information that they receive, weather and climate wise. In this case, rainfall advisory really is the most important. Slide please. Percentages are presented in this slide. 76% reported that rainfall affects their decision to apply fertilizer. 78% affects their 
decision to apply pesticides, 75% um, reported that rainfall influences their irrigation decisions, 66% uh, reported that rainfall affects their crop protection measures. 72% affects their harvesting decisions. Storage um, did not influence that much. Uh, was not influenced by by uh, climate and weather information that much, as uh, as we have received from our uh, key informants. Next slide, please. In terms of tactical decisions, we have the allocation of land for the next season, the allocation of financial resources as well, decisions to look for off-farm labor, planting schedule for the next season, crop variety choice for the next season, crop choice also for the next season. So in this case, advisories on ENSO, La Nina and El Nino influence the planting schedule, the crop variety, um, and the crop choice for the next season. So this is a season-wide uh, advisory that uh, farmers and other agricultural stakeholders prefer to consider when deciding on major decisions, major tactical decisions. Next slide, please. Again, uh, you have here uh, the details in terms of percentages for tactical decisions. Next slide, please. In terms of strategic decisions or the long-term tropical uh, cyclone currents, or well, the long-term uh, considerations in terms of changes in climate within the region or within the, the communities that they have, um, you see here the critical decision on the crop livestock mix to follow, decision to uh, to go for perennial crops compared to annual crops and the actual land use for their for their farms. So these are well decisions with long term implications and probably uh, more investment uh, on the part of the the farming household. Next slide, please. More on climate sensitive decisions in terms of crop choice. Um, forecast wise, uh, when you have drought or below normal rainfall, as advised, uh, the response usually is drought tolerant crop uh, adaptation, such as the planting of potatoes and radish for, for a few of our farmers in Dinket. So, this goes the same for so many activities that are affected by. The information or forecast that they receive, climate and weather wise. So you have here crop choice, planting time, source of irrigation, occurrence of specific uh, agreement uh, phenomenon, such as frost, for example, activities, including harvesting. So these are some of the on farm activities that are affected by the type of um, climate and weather information that they receive, including forecasts. So there are so many responses available to farmers and really going through them and trying to assess whether they are applicable and whether they are the optimal solutions to such um, is, I think, a very good exercise, not only for farmers, but also for those change agents looking at augmenting or helping farmers in terms of their productivity options. Next slide, please. So decision makers, LGUs, institutions, truckers, uh, those within the value chain, they are, a lot of them are looking at the ENSO forecasts, the occurrences of El Nino and La Nina, which have season-wide implications. So it's either for them uh, to provide more public investment in terms of uh, providing services, or uh, putting more money in infrastructure and delivering uh, whatever the needs of the local farming communities are. So you have here, for example, the samples of uh, responses like the distribution of uh, irrigation uh, infrastructure or equipment, uh, the delivery of uh, required water. Uh, in some areas in, in Benguet, they had to transport water. In, in, uh, 
in those areas not accessible by, by hoses or any other means of irrigation, supplemental irrigation. Um, they could look at sending more advisories through SMS and, and through other means. So for those within the supply chain, there are so many options, including delaying transport, looking at other centers uh, for selling the produce. Next slide, please. Barriers to access and utilization of weather and climate information. Next slide, please. So we did a couple of um, workshops. One led by Pagasa for a national consultation, and the other was led by uh, PIDS and UPLB for the regional consultations. For PIDS, we did our consultations with Impact as well, looking at high value crop producers. And uh, we were helped, we were assisted by the Bengate State University, our local partner, in terms of grounding activities under the project. We were also assisted by our partners within the localities, particularly those uh, within the ATOC LG. Next slide, please. So in discussing, for example, the products that Pagasa has, uh, weather and climate uh, forecast wise, it's worth doing a technical domain analysis. Uh, for example, if you're going to look at the array of products and services that we have right now, there are so many, and a lot of them really uh, would be difficult for, for farmers and some of the stakeholders to grasp in terms of the technical uh, breadth and dimensions. So we try to categorize the products into four. Uh, you have your weather warnings, weather forecasts, climate outlooks and advisories, and climate projections. So weather warnings provide updates on adverse weather conditions such as heavy rainfall, tropical cyclones, storm surges, and gales. So these are um, very immediate in terms of uh, their effect. Weather forecasts at most uh, include forecasts three days forward. So you have a, uh, some sort of a lead time for, for these uh, forecasts. Climate outlooks and advisories are forecasts with weekly, with weekly to six month uh, coverage. So a season long coverage at the most. Climate projection, nationwide projections for climate for mid and late 21st century. So these are long-term projections uh, looking at possible changes within the region climate-wise. Next slide, please. Okay, so you have here uh, some of the barriers indicated by our stakeholders in terms of mismatch of understanding and users are more attuned to forecasts with more tangible impacts. So typhoons, rainfalls, and not much, not much in terms of looking at long-term forecasts, including climate change. So how can they uh, make decisions based on currently intangible uh, matters, including changes, for example, of the level of precipitation, including changes in terms of the actual seasons that they have. So a few forecasts translated into dialects. So we need to laymanize so many of our products for, for local consumption and understanding. Forecasts focused on a wider area, not reflecting microclimates. Again, I think in terms of the literature, it's been mentioned so many times that we have to look at uh, localized uh, forecasts, you know, provision, provision of weather and climate information for certain uh, microclimates for certain areas. Training on climate change adaptation for government extension workers, services does not reflect local realities. Again, grounding applicability, for whatever we're conveying to our stakeholders. In terms of infrastructure barriers, we have Pagasa products and services that are primarily online. So if you don't have connectivity, uh, infrastructure within the area it will be difficult for you to actually access and take hold of those products that we have power outages uh, within the province limited ownership and use of uh, gadgets including smartphones and 
and computers. Cost of improving infrastructure in car is also very high. That limits the development of whatever connectivity investment that they that they require within within the locality. Slide please. In terms of resource barriers, forecasts may have clear implications, but some of our stakeholders are unable to carry them out because of financial infeasibility. Adaptation of strategies with clear benefits over multiple cropping seasons often require very high initial capital expen expenditure. Farmers deterred by registration paperwork for loans and financing for, for formal establishments or institutions leading to informal credit relationships with disposers that uh, lessens their revenues and bargaining power. So there is also a need for more information in terms of specific phenomenon like uh, what we have in Benguet, frost, and as mentioned earlier, localized forecasts and probably the possibility of having real-time weather and climate uh, information delivery. Next slide, please. opportunities to leverage weather and climate information. We can invest in the local provision and transmission of information. Uh, weather and climate data reflecting more focused area. We can tap local DRR related infrastructure, including in institutional infrastructure, fund connectivity initiatives, and we can look at up, the better upkeep of automatic weather stations and the better use of data coming from those automatic weather stations. Ag asset to localize layman eyes, adopt impact based reporting, impact simulation, more convenient low cost loans uh, that shift away from unhealthy bed disposers, real time provision of weather and climate information as well. Next slide, please. Okay, in terms of developing decisions, uh, discussion tools, as mentioned earlier, we did. Um, co-learning, co-development activities with local stakeholders. That meant us going to the area so many times and us really interfacing with them, trying to come up with applicable tools for decision-making. Next slide, please. Okay, next slide, please. So among the tools that we have uh, come up with is the crop climate calendar. This is um, an upgrade of the traditional crop calendar that we have. It's um, a visual decision discussion tool that presents crop phenology, cultivation practices, weather and climate concerns in each locality. So it's very simple in terms of uh, an aid for decision making, but really coming up with the actual crop climate calendar was a bit tedious in terms of us uh, interfacing with not only with um, local stakeholders, but also experts, uh, technical experts uh, on the field. Next slide, please. We looked at uh, verbal decision as as well, in terms of uh, putting more structure into a decision-making framework. Next slide, please. And then the Rapid Climate Decision Analysis, or RCDA, which is an Excel-based platform that inputs um, the growing costs and projected income per climate state using probabilistic forecasts. Next slide, please. Okay, just an example of your conventional crop calendar, presenting the commodities and when they are planted during the year. Next slide, please. Now you have the the crop climate calendar, which is, I think, a very big upgrade in terms of the contents that we have included. So you have the um, the physical uh, inputs required in terms of uh, the growth stages of the crop, farming activities, the risks involved, in, including pests and diseases, weather and climate risks. Next slide, please. And uh, everything is indicated within uh, the appropriate timeline for the cropping season, either it be for the wet or dry season in Benguet. 
Next slide, please. So for this initiative, we actually developed three uh, crop climate calendars, one for cabbage, one for carrot, one for potato. So we iterated so many uh, interfaces with local stakeholders, growers of these commodities, and we tried to get as much input from experts for the scientific side of uh, things. So interfaces were not only with farmers, but also with uh, key members in the communities, including local government officials. Next slide, please. So examples of what you have as well in our crop climate calendars, common practices in terms of land preparation, irrigation, fertilizer application. So we see a lot of uh, cultural practices that transcend commodities you know, in the area. But there are common activities, even if you are planting different commodities in the uplands, I think. Next slide, please. So I'll just go through very quickly. These are the contents of uh, our crop climate calendars, and really it's worth looking at them individually. So pest and disease management, you have here uh, details for cabbage, for carrot, and for potato. Next slide, please. Okay, you have your carrots and then potato. Next slide, please. Weather and climate risks. So you have so many indicated here. Hail, rain, heat, rainfall, excessive uh, radiation, frost, temperature, water deficit. Next slide, please. So it's the same for the other crops, carrot, cabbage, next slide, please, and potato. Next slide, please. So with the crop climate calendar, you look at the, the preferred crop uh, in the area and um, try to aggregate all the requirements in terms of the, the growing stages, in terms of the required inputs, within a cropping season, uh, and also taking into good consideration all the risks involved, pest and disease-wise, as well as uh, weather and climate-related uh, hazards. Next slide, please. Yeah. For rapid climate decision analysis, uh, RCDA, farm productivity is dependent on weather and seasonal climate states. RCDA links farm budgets and seasonal climate probabilities in a decision context. And our very own Dr. Peter Heyman from Sardi uh, initi initiated this uh, platform. So this, I think, is a very good uh, visual for uh, aiding the decision making among uh, not only farmers, but also among extension workers in terms of the options that they would uh, convey to their constituents. So, for example, you have here a good table. And just coming up with this kind of table really is very tedious. You have to have so much uh, interface time with local stakeholders. What's good here is that, um, well, you are getting everything quite quickly. So it doesn't uh, rely, for example, on having season-long trials for you to get actual numbers in terms of uh, input and uh, productivity figures. But really, you just interfacing with stakeholders and probably experts uh, in the field uh, would do for a very quick uh, um, platform for discussion. Next slide, please. Okay, so you have here the yield and gross margin estimates for cabbage, carrot, and potatoes during the wet season for a one hectare rainfall farm. In this case, cabbage yield the most uh, and resulted to very high cross uh, margin estimates. Next slide, please. Okay, RCD as well. Next slide, please. So this is the uh, this is how RCD looks like. Uh, you have number one the probabilistic forecast chart uh, up there. Number two, 
uh, the profit decile graph. Number three, the graph of difference in gross margins. And number four, the comparison of long-term average gross margins. For example, if you're comparing uh, cabbage to, to carrot, uh, or trying to make a decision whether to plant carrot or cabbage for the season, this is, a, I think, a very good uh, visualization tool for you to look at eventual uh, productivity outcomes given uh, weather and climate uh, information for that season. Next slide, please. Okay, another uh, part of the RCD interface. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Oh, well, uh, no, no, uh, let's go back to that slide. So you have here, for example, uh, two cases. To your left is an RCDA um, run showing you um, a case where there is no forecast. Okay, so up there you have the, the even uh, 33, 33, 33 uh, probability for um, seasonal scenarios. The one to your right is uh, a case wherein you have um, a wet forecast for the season. So you see movements in terms of uh, um, the cross margin movements based on the deciles. And then the, the graph below shows you the differences in terms of cross margins. So really, I think in terms of uh, it being a tool for decision making, it's a very good way to start uh, discussions with farmers as well as extension workers in terms of making eventual decisions. Next slide, please. So we've done the same exercise for several critical decisions on farm. And that included, for example, um, the choice of crop, um, the planting dates, as well as the investment for potential irrigation uh, augmentation on farm. Next slide, please. So each of those runs really necessitate a deeper uh, discussion. So um, what we are saying is that there are possibilities given a certain season and given the probable weather and climate state during that season. And you looking at basis for comparison in terms of eventual performance really would help a lot. Slide please. Okay, still uh, the RCDA showing you uh, the range of its uh, potential application. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Okay, so in looking at RCDA, we look at uh, the potential state for a certain uh, cropping season. And then you base your decision making in terms of potential performances of your, uh, your choices yeah, or alternatives uh, in terms of, for example, um, operational and tactical uh, options for that certain uh, commodity within that certain season and given a certain state. So it's a very quick way to value decision outcomes given different seasonal climate states using farm budgets per crop, per season, per seasonal climate state. It allows outcome iterations given probabilistic forecasts for a given season, particularly for critical on-farm decisions such as planting schedule, crop choice, facility investment, etc. The caveat is this is just a discussion tool. It's not prescriptive. So whatever um, the figures in terms of potential outcomes that we have generated using RCD, it's really not us telling them that you should do this or you should plant this or you should extend your planting schedule to this day. It's really just a tool for them to, uh, to decide and for them to discuss possibilities. Next slide, please. 
So that's RCDA. Now we go to social network analysis. Next slide, please. So in trying to better understand as well the communities we were working with, um, we did um, social network analysis. So it essentially characterized information networks. It identified and described both central and peripheral nodes and assessed the extent of reach of extension workers. So we grounded the study in Benguet in three CTOs uh, within APOC. And um, the next slide will show you the, uh, the networks that we have uh, come up with. Next slide, please. So we did a full enumeration of households in CTO proper Pauai, CTO Tulodan, CTO Macbas. These are uh, CTOs with different uh, situations. For example, proper Pauai is close to the center of Atok. Tulodan and CTO Macbas are a bit more remote. So they have different uh, access to information as well as facilities for sourcing information. Slide, please. Okay, so bounded network of inter-household social relations. You have here networks in Pauai, Tulodan, and Macbas. Network density matches with expectations based on CTO characteristics. Proper Pauai, larger and closer to the municipal center, is less cohesive compared to the more isolated communities. Next slide, please. It's probably intuitive. Because if you're looking at uh, the more urban communities, neighbors don't really talk to each other. Networks vary by type of weather and climate information, showing greater activity for more tangible information such as rainfall and typhoons. So you have here the different uh, weather and climate products and the different network, social networks associated with their transmission. So heavy rainfall warning, tropical cyclone warning, daily weather forecasts, El Nino narratives, and non pagasa sources. Next slide, please. So networks by type as well, uh, weather and climate uh, information in Tulodan. Next slide, please. And then in Macbas. Next slide, please. This one presents the extent of penetration of our agricultural extension workers based on social networks. So the red represents nodes who have interacted with extension workers. This shows the penetration of uh, the areas in terms of the reach of our change agents. Next slide, please. Extent of penetration of AEWs. In Tulodan. Next slide, please. And this one is the case in Macbas. Next slide, please. Okay, last two slides, key insights. Gaps exist between the provision of weather and climate information and its use in the agricultural sector, presenting barriers to operational, tactical, and strategic decisions on and off farm. Number two, weather and climate information must be communicated through effective channels while continuously improving the area of agromet products and services that we have. Number three, capacitate extension work uh, agents and strengthen information dissemination and stakeholder support mechanisms through connectivity and institutional augmentations. Number three, and uh, number four, consider localized forecasts, dialect translations, and impact-based reporting. Number five, Pursue funding and support for mobile information access, digital platform, and the upkeep and better use of the automated weather stations for possible localized and real-time delivery. Slide, please. Engage progressive farmers and community leaders to promote weather and climate application and better understanding on how they are transmitted within communities. LGUs and NGAs to invest on and initiate action to effectively communicate productivity options and weather and climate information, including the range and importance of available Pagasa products. Enhance hard and soft infrastructure, physical networks and institutions 
including real-time advisory services for on and off-farm operations, and invest more in R&D to develop decision-making tools for change agents and smallholder farmers to improve outputs and navigate complex risks in farming. And lastly, consider climate change adaptation, disaster preparedness, and resiliency as anchors to better on and off farm productivity. I think that's the last slide. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Domingo. Obviously, your study, the research project, has uh, generated a wealth of uh, information on the various aspects of uh, the use and accessibility of weather and climate information. So you've researched, you and your team have researched on um, the barriers, barriers to access, as well as uh, you even um, explored uh, the different uh, decision making tools that our uh, farmers and change agents can use no to uh, optimize decision making and you even went as far as doing a social network analysis so at this point um let us uh, listen to the reactions of our discussants and we invited our partners from pagasa and the department of agriculture so friends we will uh, here first from Pagasa, and our discussant is an experienced climatologist slash meteorologist. Perhaps she can um, later on when uh, when when we call her, she can tell us the difference between a climatologist and a meteorolo meteorologist. Our discussant is the lead person in the regional downscaling of climate projections for the Philippines using different um, using different providing regional climate impacts and uh, conformal cubic atmospheric model. Okay, she has also served as the focal person in the project on uh, Southeast Asia climate modeling, and she's also in charge of the development on provision of climate change projections for the Philippines. She is actively involved in different research studies on climate change, environability, impact assessment, and impact assessment of various socioeconomic uh, sectors in the, in the country. Currently, she is the chief of Pagasa's impact assessment and application section, which is under the climatology and agrometeorology division. And she obtained her uh, electronics and communications degree from the University of the East as a master's in computer science from Ama Computer College and a master's in public administration from the Polytechnic University of the Philippines. Friends, Ms. Thelma Cinco. Thelma? Hi, Thelma. Can you unmute me? Yeah. Good afternoon. Yes, we can hear you. Yes. Uh, good afternoon in behalf of uh, <clears throat> Dr. S. P. Kayanan, our Deputy Administrator for r and I'll be representing her on his uh, her behalf. He has an emergency leave. Uh, her husband was rushed to the hospital last Tuesday. So I was asked to, to do this uh, this afternoon. So I also want to thank our partner in Asia project, the PIDS president, Dr. Celia Reyes, and her ever energetic team, like uh, Sunny and her team, inviting Pagasa as the panelists on the key findings in their studies in smallholder farmers in Benguet. Their studies uh, will surely help in, uh, for us to understand the gaps and how can we improve our services to increase the productivity of farmers and gain resilience against climate change. I also want to acknowledge uh, the presence of Dr. Peter Hyman, our partner from Sardi, Australia. So as early as 2005, we're working with PD PIDS and Ensure in bridging the gap with seasonal forecasts and decision makers in agriculture. So I was tasked to, I'm going to share my my presentation so 
and that's to the app on the study. So I'll be sharing my presentation. Ms. Sila, can I, can I share? Go ahead, Thelma. You can share your slides now. So, nasan yung share na? You can find uh, the share uh, button uh, below. It's okay. So I'll be talking the improving of delivery of weather and climate services to smallholder farmers in the Philippines through the studies of PIDS and HR project. So quickly, an update of weather update. We have a tropical cyclone, a tropical depression of hell. And in the last as issue that's of 11 a.m. Uh, it's now moving towards the West Philippine Sea, and it's going to continue to move westward and northwestward today, and it will be a low pressure area within 12 to 24 hours. So it made landfall in eastern summer, and also the last landfall is in San Juan, Batangas. So it's only uh, in our other project site at uh, Calapan. So it's it's on the it also affects the northern part of uh, Mindoro. So that's the latest weather update from Pagasa. So the challenge, as, as uh, Sunny has uh, discussed, is how weather and climate information can be uh, used and how is it disseminated. Uh, and understood and how is it used, especially to smallholder farmers. So the first uh, study that I have done is development of crop climate uh, calendars for high value crops in Atok Benguet. So here uh, the study shows that uh, can uh, cli crop climate calendars or CCC I can say, can be developed for a specific crop through user engagement as one of the key factor in the co-learning and co-development of this, the CCC through the experience of the farmers and other key stakeholders and combining it with the best available climate information in the area. So because you know for a fact that we have very uh, sparse data. So if you, uh, you don't have uh, enough data, then you combine this expert experience to the uh, climate data that is available so that and pagasa also generates scrap calendar for rice and corn so that is the traditional so you as you can see in the the crop climate calendars they could uh, uh, we could enhance our uh, current uh, crop calendars and improve it by using uh, the the one that have used the user engagement to co-produce crop specific and site specific uh, CCC in other areas in the country. And Pagasa can also improve our products by increasing user engagement through collaboration with API and other local uh, extend, uh, agriculture extension workers and also uh, leaders in the local government units. Another uh, 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 pro, uh, in the product that the, uh, the study they have is uh, weather and climate risk matching. So in this way, uh, they they were able to uh, identify what are the climate risks against uh, what are the products that that they can uh, use. So in here, uh, they increase awareness and knowledge of specific Pagasa products and services so that they can manage their risk. And also to provide, uh, to further simplify and laymanize weather climate information based from their local knowledge on climate sensitive decisions. So the, as you can see earlier, the presentation of Sony, wherein there are the uh, climate trees against what are the products that we have and what are the response. Another interesting uh, 
research that I have done is the social network analysis. The study helps us to understand how climate information reaches the last mile through farmers' network and organization. So one thing, uh, uh, establishing climate field soon can also strengthen the link between the data providers and government institution, extension workers, and to the farmers to build a stronger uh, network so that the, the information flow of uh, of uh, climate information from uh, Pagasa down line down the line to the farmers can be done. Another one that was discussed is the rapid climate decision analysis. So it's a tool or RCDA. So this tool uh, it, it has uh, shown you earlier, wherein uh, aids the extension workers or farmers in understanding the uncertainty of the seasonal forecast, and that is linked to the decision making. So based from expected climate state. So like uh, the terms that we use by Pagasa, below normal, near normal, above normal. So they could relate these terms used by Pagasa in the seasonal forecast uh, to their decision. So they have different options under a different climate state. So Pagasa can uh, uh, generate uh, uh, issues, probabilistic seasonal rainfall. So uh, use, that can be used in the RCDA tool since 2015. So for your information, we uh, we issued our La Nina advisory last October two. No, so the first issue for uh, La Nina Watts was July sixteen, as early as July sixteen. Then it was upgraded to La Nina alert September nine, and the first La Nina advisory was issued last October two. So La Nina is present in the tropical Pacific, so. We expect a week to moderate La Nina will likely to persist until the first quarter of 2021. So usually La Nina in the country is the experience a weather condition. So this can be used in the RCDA. So uh, if we look at it, it is available in our website. So during the uh, risk matching, uh, the, the farmers and the extension workers were taught on how uh, to access information and what information is available. So here, uh, seasonal forecast for Benguet for November. So you have a 24% probability to be below normal, 31% to be near normal, or 46% to be above normal. So if you look at countrywide, then you are, there is a high chance of uh, having above normal rainfall during the month of uh, November. So this is available in our web and can be used. So as discussed earlier by Sonny, the, the barriers to Pagasa information, one is the lack of technological devices, uh, especially in, in uh, mountain areas wherein you have, you have low signal connectivity, so lack of accessibility to more detailed information. So this was discussed earlier, and lack of information dissemination and poor coordination among uh, government entities. So in utilization, they have difficulty in, in to interpret and utilize too general, so not site specific, and limited understanding of technical terms and concepts and lack of political priority. So what are the recommendation is assisting farmers in accessing information, timely release of information, put up regular updated community bulletin boards, updated community uh, bulletin boards, or SMS blasts for information to farmers. In utilization, uh, disseminate warnings to farming communities and and using the extension workers as a link to the farmers, and also establish more synaptic Pagasa stations. In our modernization uh, program, uh, Pagasa is to uh, uh, going to 
uh, established synaptic station for every province because currently not all provinces are uh, covered with synaptic station. And there's also the need for laymanizing the terms and develop training materials for extension workers and develop training programs. So this, what are the opportunities for Pagasa and a way to go? So uh, as I said earlier, is radio is still the, the most used uh, uh, way of communicating our climate information weather and climate information, so maybe improving the radio-based information dissemination and also in part a, a conduct of regular uh, IEC information education campaign using the Clima Agricultura that was developed, uh, co-developed with the ATI in partnership with ATI in regular uh, uh, trainings of AEWs as well as farmers and also establishment of climate field school, systematic and consistent dissemination of protocols, and formulate plans for uh, climate threats, and another for the adaptation. Uh, Pagasa provides climate projections and hazard assessments that will inform their LCCAP as well as the loop. And of course, our Pagasa modernization plan uh, is still uh, in, in progress. And also establishment of a communication mechanism between farmers and extension workers and establish institutional linkages for civil society groups and international organizations uh, so that uh, you have a, a, a mechanism on how to reach the farmers at different uh, ways. So that is the uh, way to go. And we are also asked to look at the our uh, current uh, initiatives of Pagasa in terms of the, uh, improving uh, weather and climate monitoring, forecasting, and warning programs. So I just uh, pick out uh, some of our activities towards uh, the delivery of climate information. So we also have this program of climate information and service delivery program. This is uh, in Anna's group. So Anna is in uh, around so they also have the initially we only hold our climate forum uh, and national so now we are going to the province so provincial climate forum per year so initially 10 provinces uh, per year but and also regional climate outlook forum so Anna currently is very busy and doing the regional climate outlooks and also advancing climate monitoring and prediction system uh, since uh, we're going to do uh, we are doing probabilistic so we already established an advanced climate monitoring prediction system using the pagasas high performance com computer for climate and uh, service delivery another one is uh, we have also our apps uh, with the group of the farm weather uh, uh, section so they have this uh, payong pagasa for, for uh, apps so farm weather products and it will going to uh, extend it to the different regions of the country as a means of fast accessibility to farm forecast and advisory and in particularly in atop uh, they experience frost so currently uh, we are developing a uh, frost forecast and also lastly is uh, we have this uh, approved GCF project uh, a multi-hazard impact based forecasting and early warning system or uh, MS IBF uh, EWS in the Philippines which is going to be uh, implemented for five years and and looking at the different hazards such as flooding severe wind landslide storm surge that it will be implemented for uh, five, uh, uh, four pilot areas, but will be upscaled uh, on the national scale. So as uh, Sunny was saying earlier, uh, an impact base for uh, information and also trying to laymanize. So what the farmer needs to know is what will be the impact uh, if they will have a 
tropical cyclone or very intense rainfall. So what, what is uh, what we going to have for the next five years? We move towards uh, impact base, not what the weather will be, but what the weather will do. So as a conclusion, the Asia project provided uh, great opportunities for Pagasa to realize the areas that needs improvement, especially in information dissemination to stakeholders. It helps if climate science is clear about uncertainty and agriculture decision makers are clear about their climate sensitive decisions. So we are working on tools that use decision analysis for this purpose, like uh, the VDA and the RCDA. So uh, Sadi was uh, talking more of the RCDA. And it is necessary also to conduct consistent assessment and reassessment of the impact to farming communities of the improved dissemination. And of course, continuous IEC through Clima Agricultura uh, in partnership with ATI as well. And also, Pagasa continues to strive to improve weather and climate service delivery through its modernization program. And I want to add uh, to end that weather and climate information becomes a resource when it is understood and properly utilized for weather and climate affects our lives, uh, daily lives. So with that, uh, maraming salamat sa lahat. And thank you to Ms. Uh, Thelma Sink of Pagasa. Um, we appreciate your candid assessment of the institutional issues confronting your office, which in turn affects uh, the way uh, you deliver services to your uh, uh, target clients. And we also appreciate uh, your telling us of the initiatives that so far has been undertaken by, by your agency in order to address uh, the bottlenecks that you identified. Perhaps later on, you can tell us more about um, that uh, modernization program that PAGASA has, uh, is uh, currently implementing. And uh, so we look forward to um, your uh, details on, on that uh, modernization program. Uh, perhaps you can tell us more about it during the Q&A. Okay, ma'am. So, now we go to our next um, speak to our next uh, discussant, and um, at this point, I'd like to call on our uh, discussant from the Department of um, Agriculture, and um, she is a senior technical staff of the Climate Resilient Agriculture Office, which is an ag hoc ad hoc unit established in 2011 under the Office of the Undersecretary for Policy and Planning of the DA. And uh, actually, if you do a Google search on her, because we receive only a um, limit, limited information as re uh, regarding her um, profile. So if you do a Google search on her, you'll find her numerous involvement in projects and other activities re re uh, related to climate change and adaptation and uh, mitigation. So friends, uh, Ms. Perla Baltazar of uh, the Department of Agriculture. Perla? Hi, Perla, go uh, ahead. Yes, yes, Papa. Uh, mga... Our partners from Asia. But, uh, we have with us today also the directors of Europe Soils and Man Managed Soil, director for uh, field operations. So I'll be presenting in behalf of uh, director. Uh, just, it used to be an ad hoc office when it was established. 
2011. But uh, with the new administration, with the uh, with Secretary Dar, he to institutionalize office site um, office looking at the strategic. Uh, and it is on uh, uh, regarding climate change, how we um, address climate change. Okay. So uh, earlier, the study was presented and the, the gaps and the problems were already discussed. Uh, so details were also uh, discussed or addressed by Pagasa. So this afternoon, I will be sharing with you how the Department of Agriculture is, where is the Department of Agriculture is. These concerns presented from the study and the, the gaps that uh, had already been identified. Well, uh, earlier, Mama Telma has already given the latest information on, uh, on typhoon, uh, on um, uh, tropical depression of fell. So just to share with you, this is our weather outlook and advisory for Calabarzon region. As of yesterday at 8 a.m., uh, October 14. So you will see from this uh, document, this was issued by the regional office. Um, they sourced the, the weather information from Pagasa, but it was translated with, uh, it was issued with uh, uh, climate resilient agriculture practices ap applicable before the typhoon, during the typhoon, and even after the typhoon. It also shows the impact outlooks, how it will uh, impact the area, the region, and what are the preparations being done by the regional office? What are the support available from the regional, DA regional office? So you see, we are already uh, doing this type of uh, service, giving this uh, weather uh, outlook and farm advisories as a basic service. Uh, Although we are not yet that capable, but we are already uh, working on it slowly but surely. Okay. You will uh, perhaps uh, notice that the uh, advisory is still in English. No? So what we would like to do is in, in dialect. No? So for region, region 4A, for Calabarzon, this must, must be in Tagalog. Uh, maybe with the omission of the alae for Batangas. <laughs> okay. To introduce to you the Adaptation and Mitigation Initiative in Agriculture, or what we call AMIA. AMIA is the flagship in, in uh, addressing uh, the challenges of climate change in the sector. Um, way back. A memorandum was issued by our then secretary to mainstream climate change in the activities. Um, but uh, uh, doing this, we have to first um, Department of Agriculture to to be able to lay down the the um, enabling environment for our services to be. Uh, climate uh, sensitive or, or doing our services with the climate lens. We have identified then seven areas to, to work where climate is the, yes, here, the AMIA, and then the climate information services, including um, the knowledge toolbox or the technologies and researches infrastructure, credit risk information, credit and risk insurance, regulation and extension. So um, for today, I would like to zero in on climate information service. Um, we have 
seen then that this is an impor important uh, factor in addressing weather and climate uh, challenges. No? And we are aiming to have localized climate information which are effective as uh, early warning tools for agri-fisheries. Um, uh, we also want that, uh, to provide um, periodic, periodic uh, advisories, no? could be a 10-day, a monthly, or seasonal weather forecast using PAG-ASAS um, bulletin, weather bulletins. And then we want to translate this into farm advisories because as I uh, have, have been said, uh, it's not what the weather will be, but what the weather will do that matters to our farmers and fisher folks. Um, this will serve as a basis for their farm management and operations. So being an early warning tool, it will minimize losses on labor and inputs, and also lesser damages on crops and its infrastructures. And therefore, we are looking for better or greater productivity and incomes. So with this uh, in mind, the DA has already set its um, uh, programs, not only on, on AMIA, no, but even on our rice programs, DSW, DSWM, we have already uh, uh, done some initial uh, activities for this. Uh, we have been um, establishing AWS in farming areas, unlike uh, what we ha we usually have in Pagasa. They are in uh, um, in airports, in uh, SUCs, in uh, municipal halls. No, but uh, for us to have a localized climate information. Uh, we would like to set up AWS for data gathering to beef up and to have a more robust data. Uh, we want it placed where the action is. So sa mga uh, farming areas po natin yan gustong ilagay. There are existing initiatives on CIS sa uh, agri-fisheries sector natin. Uh, one famous is the Dumangas Climate Field School, which is in Iloilo, and has since in 2007 trained farmers on climate information service um, model po ito. So, merong mga tinitrain doon for, for them to understand better uh, how um, climate, weather, and uh, in relation to farming or fishing are affecting their activities. Uh, one also, uh, one CSO, uh, civil society organization, is the Rice Watch and Action Network, R1, who's been our partner in uh, localizing climate information services. And they do this uh, in tandem with the Climate Resiliency Field School. No? Uh, the, uh, we know that the capacity of DA is very limited. We have F, uh, the, the Agricultural Training Institute, but uh, uh, we, we need some partners also to scale up the reach of our uh, advocacy for CIS. Um, the strategy of R1 is to get a specific area and from there, educate their farmers through the climate resiliency field schools. And uh, in that school, they, 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 they study the relations, the phenology, the re re relationship of uh, crops and, and weather, and they apply it. So hands-on po yung paggawa nila ng, ng uh, application ng CIS sa kanilang farms. So they really would appreciate it. And they do this uh, in close coordination with PAGASA because they are the source of uh, the technical information and also with the support of the local government units. One good example of this is in Herona Tarlac. Nakaset up na po sila doon. And there are also other areas. And right now they're doing this together with our DA Region 6 uh, office 
they're doing some in Guimaras and also in Antique right now. Okay. And then, of course, the initiatives of uh, the department uh, itself, the BSWM agrobit projects, and the enhanced FFS uh, field schools also. And our demonstration um, um, media, which is the Amea Village, an example of which is the Pamplona, is in Pamplona, Camarín Sur. You know, uh, as we said, we would like to, Amia would like to allow our, well, our foresight is to allow our farming and fishing communities to pursue livelihoods while effectively managing climate risks and uh, providing them with uh, integrated support services. So uh, we chose an Amia village after we have uh, assessed their uh, vulnerabilities and their, uh, in that specific village, we bring in the integrated support of uh, DA, uh, what are available support coming from the different programs and the different initiatives under the Department of Agriculture. <clears throat> um, this, uh, uh, right now, um, as I said, Pamplona is an example, and we have already uh, built an Ambia village there uh, using climate resilient agriculture practices. And one uh, feature, and uh, they are one, uh, they excel on this, is the climate information services, it's the utilization of climate inter information services. So, because our regional field of five has been um, uh, a recipient of many uh, successive grants, because sila naman po ay sunod sunod din ang dilubyo na nakinaharap. So there were a lot of uh, training, capacity building, such that right now they are able to to develop already a manual on climate information service delivery. So and this one they are now sharing. They are now sharing with other offices by training them. They have uh, developed a package where um, the processing of climate information is uh, detailed, how to translate it into special weather bulletins to regional or seasonal climate outlook and provincial, and if possible, also down to municipal. But uh, with a limited information and with the limited data, uh, I, I, we don't think it's still it's it's yet possible. It's not yet possible. But uh, uh, systematically, uh, as CIS is already uh, part of the services of our regional office five, and they are now sharing this with uh, everyone. So uh, I would just like to highlight the points for CIS implementation. So uh, as we know, there are critical data. So these are the knowledge of maps and weather relations. The forecast or weather outlook, which is uh, um, given by PAGASA. We usually source it from PAGASA. The risk management and farm advisories and uh, uh, what, what they should do, what, what the farmer should be doing. And not just uh, farm advisories, but we would like it to be uh, climate resilient agriculture options or practices. So those are the critical data that we need. And then the process, we need to translate the forecast into risk management and farm advisories and identify what CRA options that should be given or done. And then to disseminate as uh, the study of uh, uh, as the study present, presented earlier of uh, Dr. Domingo and team, uh, dissemination and communication is uh, one problem. And uh, this is what we are trying to address in our uh, AMIA Villages project. Um, by, by putting out weather boards, weather advisory, putting them in, in public places such as in 
in the municipal hall, um, courts, or even in barangay halls where it is easily accessible by by uh, our farmer, farmers and fisher folks. However, again, uh, it's not as fast as uh, uh, having it delivered by text or radio messages. And then critical also are our actors. Well, for the, the provider, the PAGASA, then we have the, the DARFOs or the regional field offices <clears throat> where uh, they help translate the forecast into risk management and farm advisories. Uh, what uh, the regional field office five has done is to pull some experts such that uh, in that manual that they have done, uh, they have identified uh, what particular uh, risk management options and farm advisories will be applicable given a certain forecast. So may menu na po sila na nagawa in that and, and it, was, it was already compiled in a manual. And then the, the CSOs, LGUs, and the agricultural extension workers, our farmers group for effective communication of uh, our information. So given these three uh, points, critical data, actors, processes, uh, we need to um, work together and, and process this together so that uh, we could overcome whatever challenges na, na identified, uh, already identified uh, with that study that we had. Okay. Uh, based on actual based on actual uh, experience uh, ito po yung mga challenges na na-identify pa rin namin even as we go through the initial uh, roll out of CIS in agriculture uh, question is how often should the advisory be uh, using the R1 model uh, they have the 10 days uh, forecast you know, and they also seasonal and um, uh, there are special bulletins also. So, ito na po yung practice so that each the, the uh, farmers will have a guide in doing their day-to-day -day, uh, farming activities. And again, another question is who should translate? Although dun po sa processes natin, nakalagay na dun na uh, ang actor natin for here are siempre local it should be local no kasi local dialect so uh we are um looking at the the active participation or the leadership of the LGU uh para magawa po natin nominate them to their constituents okay um uh, the knowledge of risk uh, management options. So, as experience po nga namin, medyo mahirap naman din. And, and based dun sa study, meron tayo, meron mga well, with the, with the crop uh, climate calendar and the R, RCDA ba yung isa, no? It also needs technical, some technical experience, no? Or experts to do that. So, uh, we need to consider also the local knowledge or the local or indigenous experience. So, the decision making, may factor din natin ito sa kanila. Then, communication strategies to uh, the communities. Uh, sabi nga, text is only the, the third out of that study and rate. If we're talking about localized say for each municipality right it's really possible na through radio kasi hindi naman po lahat ng municipality ay may may radio stations or may radio uh, facility but uh, given nga rin po the the DRR facilities ngayon no na beneath up then sa local governments then maybe uh, ito rin yung isang pwedeng pagka uh, itap for for the for disseminating the the farm advisories and uh, the weather outlook okay access of farmers to risk 
especially in emergency situations. Uh, yan din naman po, no? Uh, Department of Agriculture can only reach, has only its, uh, ano, sa regional level. We depend on uh, the the municipal, city, uh, 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 the uh, municipal agricultural officers, no, yung mga extension workers. So we can only give give advice, no, na pinag sa lugar ay ang mga uh, local uh, workers natin. As regards sa technologies, meron din, meron din naman po kaming mga uh, technology bulletins or CRA technical briefs no, that we can, um, uh, that we have packaged based on certain areas. No? So pinag meron din po kaming mga pag-aaral on that, what uh, risk management technologies are applicable for certain crops and for certain areas. Oh, again, sa detail in Vietnam. Yan po ngayon yung aming ipina uh, okay. uh, when our our office was uh, 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 directed by the, the secretary our number four Ang kasama po doon is for of farm and fishing advisories based on climate and weather outlook is one of the basic critical services to be provided. So maliwanag po that the Department of Agriculture acknowledges that the farm advisories to our farming and fishing nangarin po natin yung problema mga problema ang kinakaharap and so we're working towards it now uh, uh, una dun sa ating Amia Village uh, uh, model no but uh, we are now working to scale this up no but again uh, scaling would be uh, hindi po madaling gawin no lalo na daming communities that we have to work on. So, dito po talagang tinitingnan natin ang partnership with our LGUs. We can only do this if the the LGUs um, realize the critical uh, information and the uh, climate information to their uh, constituents. So, uh, Gawa na namin. Uh, we have trained our regional AMIA on uh, the translation of uh, uh, weather forecast into farm advisories. Uh, again, with close partnership. So I, I, I was supposed to talk up to this point, but uh, during the during the ang isa pong highlight dun sa kanila sa findings is the need for capital no so i would like to share with you the um, uh, financing na pwedeng ma-avail ng farmers natin the acpc although nabanggit kanina for uh, at saka tong recovery project but there are others no uh makita po ito ano collateral so really it's for for small farmers and fishers ay uh, yan pa lang po yung expanded sure at saka reco and recovery ngayon yung agri negosyo or anyo which is also uh yes uh ayan pa yung micro agri negosyo small ag agri negosyo from from 300 to 50 all and again oh maganda zero interest rate and the uh, payment is dependent on the cash flow of the project for our young entrepreneurs uh meron din po ngayong window for up 500,000 loanable amount at zero interest and again dependent po sa projected cash payment 
um, uh, surely, uh, sabi sa study, yung, they, they don't have access, yung pag-comply sa mga, sa mga documents, no? But, uh, sabi nga po natin, to maximize talaga the, the benefits or the, the the support services from the Department of Agriculture, una, they have to be registered with the RSBSA or the for agricultural based ano po, RSBSA natin. And another advocacy right now by the Department of Agriculture is for consolidation or farm consolidation and, and clustering. Kasi in an individual basis. So, Yun din po yung panawagan ng ating secretary that we we don't have to be individualistic but uh, let's take advantage of uh, clustering or or consolidation by being part of uh, cooperatives no so that uh, we can also easily avail of the services available and uh, take advantage of the economies of scale if you will ask po, meron naman tayong uh, contacts, EPC, at sa ating uh, uh, CAR, sa RFO Cordillera Administrative Region, and then po i-flash ko yung ano, available din po ito sa aking presentation later. So for Region 1, nandiyan din po. With that, uh, I would like to thank uh, you and uh, Sige po, if you have further questions later, I will be ready to answer. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Ma'am Perla. We uh, um, thank you for exerting all efforts po to, to be satisfied for your, your choppy uh, connection. So in particular, ah, in particular, your slide five, the slide five of your presentation was very insightful. Yung pong points for uh, CIS implementation because you identified there the critical um, information, also the critical, uh, I mean the critical data, also the uh, the actors as well as the process. So makikita talaga yung interface, particularly on the yung sa side ng sa actors, no, because it uh, spells out the um, the functions of the of the different actors. Uh, there may be questions related to that slide later on, ma'am. So, um, at this point, okay, uh, since perhaps we can give uh, some time to our uh, speakers to have a, a short break before the Q&A. And um, I have received some private messages from uh, our WebEx participants saying that they look forward to the poll. So yeah, let's run a poll now. And uh, I hope you have listened intently to the presentation of uh, Dr. Uh, Domingo because our poll question will come from his uh, presentation. And uh, uh, for this webinar, we will give two. Uh, we will give two winners. We will give a prize to two winners who will answer our question uh, correctly. So what we will do is we will get all the names of those who answered the poll question correctly and randomly pick two names. And each of them will receive this one, the PIDS notebook, and uh, five guaranteed slots to our webinar next week on October 22. So are you ready, friends? Are you ready sa ating poll? So here is the question. When? Okay. So the question is, what are the three decision tools uh, discussed in the study? Okay, so A, verbal decision analysis, SWOT analysis, and rapid climate decision analysis. That's A. And then B, prop climate calendar, verbal decision analysis, and rapid climate decision analysis. And C, Crop Climate Calendar, Ishikawa Diagram, and prime, Rapid Climate Decision Analysis. You may answer now. We are giving you 10 seconds to answer our poll. Our timer starts now. Okay. 
Okay, your time is up. Gwen, could you please close the poll? And WebEx needs at least 20 seconds, according to our uh, platform master, Gwen, to process the results. And while waiting, let me tell you about the next part of our program, which is the open forum. So we will have Dr. Domingo. We'll also have uh, Ms. Uh, Ms. Perla Baltazar, also Ms. Thelma Sinko as part of the panel. Dr. Uh, Peter Heyman is also joining us. And also, Dr. Heyman has already left. Okay, it's it's fine. Um, our panel will, joining us on our uh, Q&A panel are uh, Dr. Celia Res and Dr. Obito Buga, who are also part of the PIDS research project. Okay, so, you can see on the screen the results of our poll. Okay, so right now we have 132 WebEx participants, no? No answer, 81. And then for A, there were two responses. For B, there's 39. And for C, there's 10. So if you answered B, your answer is correct. I have to make sure, okay? It's B. Okay. And so if you answered uh, B, then we will draw, um, as I mentioned earlier, two names from among those who answered B, and we will um, announce who the winners are in this poll before the end of the open forum. Okay, so friends, let us now proceed to the Q&A. So at this point, I would like, uh, I would like to invite our Q&A panel to uh, be ready uh, to entertain questions. So most of our questions actually refer to, are directed to Pag-asa. So, okay, let us start. Okay, one of the questions that we've um, that we've received is on the uh, La Nina, actually. La Nina may, may forecast naman si ma'am, but it is a, a forecast particularly for yung sa kay Ofel, no? So, okay, uh, just to start uh, our um, Q&A rolling, we have a question from Tonin Galang of the GIZ. Uh, which part of the country will be much affected by the La Nina and, and until when this occur if i remember it correctly the weather advisory said it's uh it will last until the end of the year am i correct uh, miss um miss perla oh miss thelma miss thelma can you comment on this ma'am can you answer this question okay i'm oh, sorry am i muted no ma'am you're okay now okay so uh, the uh, the La Nina advisory is uh, issued this month, and the forecast is uh, is likely to persist until the first quarter of 2021. Oh, first quarter, papo. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's just started. So uh, it's uh, forecast to persist till the first quarter of 2021. Mm -hmm. And most uh, for what I showed you earlier is uh, almost throughout the country. Ano siya? Ang, ang forecast natin is above normal. So usually above normal can lead to uh, wetter conditions towards the last quarter and first quarter of the year. Or almost throughout of the country. So expect like uh, floodings as well as uh, uh, landslides uh, that is mostly uh, experienced during La Nina events. Okay, thank you very much. As a follow-up question to that, um, okay, we have other questions here. Let me jump to miss, uh, the question of Elmer Alosnos. Um, how can we access weather data from DSWM agromet stations? If I recall, call it correctly, they installed more or less 100 AWS across the country. I would like to know also if it's within the mandate of Pagasa. 
and what PAGASA did so far in terms of developing a system in order to consolidate and harmonize all the weather data coming from other local sources such as other government agencies, LGUs, SUCs, SUCs, etc. This way, um, ay maging centralized at ma-insure po sana yung quality ng data through the help of PAGASA experts. Mamu, would you like to comment on this? Uh, in terms of the AWS of uh, BSWM, it's, I think it's uh, still uh, monitor, uh, monitored by the BSWM of DA, I think. Uh, but currently, it's not yet uh, uh, being uh, integrated to our system. In terms of uh, our facilities, uh, we already have a ready ready platform we have the pagasa unified met information system wherein we could uh, integrate uh, available aws around the country from different uh, different uh, organizations such as bswm or the sarai team and later on we are still developing uh, this system so that it can be uh, uh, the data can also push back to the to the end users in our website as well. So our uh, the question is if we, we are ready to to harmonize, then our platform is ready. It's just uh, working with these uh, other institutions on how to do about it. Okay, thank you very much, ma'am. Ma'am, this next question, I'm just um, I just want your response on this. Because in the Benguet Household Survey, the most important consideration in farming decisions that was identified by the survey respondents um, in terms of weather and climate info is rainfall forecast. No? However, in terms of reliability, the respondents said it's somewhat reliable. Um, any thoughts on this? Bakit nasabi nung, nung mga respondents uh, natin na somewhat reliable yung, yung information? Bakit may gaming um, <laughs> doubt about the true, accuracy true of the information yeah. reliability? Uh, yeah. Because uh, rainfall is highly variable, variable with time and space, and it's uh, one of the most difficult in terms of forecasting. We can forecast it maybe. That's why we're issuing the, the rainfall warning system, the, uh, the color-coded uh, rainfall warning system. But usually it's for a short period of time. But now we are, uh, since uh, in our modern station, we're ac acquiring a, a the high computing facility or the CRAE, wherein we could do probabilistic uh, forecast in which we could improve the reliability of the rainfall uh, forecast. Uh, again, the most uh, difficult uh, parameter in terms of forecasting is rainfall. But we are working towards uh, uh, improving that and that by issuing the rainfall warning system, as well as uh, uh, working with the uh, like the UK Met Office in terms of uh, improving our uh, forecast as towards impact based forecasting as well not on the rainfall amount but uh, mm -hmm. will you be affected in terms of flood or you will you be flooded will your farm be flooded so things that one that way but this one is when you do impact assess uh, impact based forecasting you work with the farmers or the stakeholders so that's just a two-way communication it's not just rainfall but how does it impact to this to the sector as well Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, there have been questions from our web expert participants as well as uh, Facebook viewers on uh, the decision uh, uh, making tools uh, that were presented by presented by our uh, speaker by Dr. Domingo. So, ang, ang question nito and um, like from Sonia Asilo from Juanito Maloom. If these tools are provided uh, for free, um, can we hear from uh, Sunny? Would would you have any idea on the uh, accessibility of of these tools, and if um, our farmers, also our change agents, can uh, avail of this 
tools easily? Well, they are available to the public, but in terms of uh, accessibility and local application, it's probably not possible for the other non-project study sites. Uh, because right now we have applied the tools to, to Benguet and to Mindoro. Mm -hmm. And for those areas, the tools are very much workable now. Because even the RCD, we have inputs there. But for the other areas, we have to uh, localize the, the inputs in those tools for them to be usable. Mm -hmm. now, now, after this, uh, this project, we'll be leaving as legacy uh, documents the, the locally adapted tools in Benguet. Uh, okay. So I think uh, they'll be able to use that. Okay. Those tools that you were able to develop in Benguet, what is the um, probability of um, other areas um, adopting them? Or are they really very context specific that uh, it, it's sort of, it would be difficult to use them in other areas? But see, they are usable in certain areas with similar uh, characteristics uh, to Benguet. For example, if you're going to look at uh, Northern Mindanao, the area in, in Bukidnon, the vegetable growing areas in Lantapan, Nolo Fertich, those uh, contiguous areas planting high value crops, they are similar to Benguet in terms of condition, in terms of cultural practices. So. What you have in Benguet, in terms of those decision-making tools, can be applied to Northern Mindanao as well. So these are areas with similar profiles, and similar uh, mm -hmm. characteristics in terms of the cultural practices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Sunny. So uh, let's entertain other um, questions. And this one is from, okay, um, from Mary Claire, Marie, Mary Claire Aparicio of GIZ, um, risk management technologies. You mentioned for that you have available technologies in your bulletin, which are already packaged for certain areas. Is this ready to be disseminated to the farmers and how do farmers avail of this information? Uh, I think it's, this was part of the presentation of uh, the DA yata, no? Ma'am? Yes. Okay. Yes, uh -huh. uh, we have had studies uh, on CRA practices, uh, mm -hmm. including its uh, benefit costs and um, investment as investment guides. We did this with the uh, Center for International Tropical Agriculture, CIAT, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah. these are uh, yet available um, in, uh, in our website. It's stored in our website. We have not published it, but we are uh, uh, showing this uh, mm -mm. Uh, one by one in our fa Facebook page, the mm -hmm. AMEA Villages uh, uh, Adaptation and Mitigation Initiative uh, in Agriculture Facebook page. So, dun pa lang po, but uh, we can, if you would, are interested, I can give you the link and uh, mm -hmm. you can access it. Yes, mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. that would be useful, ma'am. No, um, yes. There, there's a there's a question on the Amia villages, which you just mentioned and which you also tackled in your presentation. Mm -hmm. So this one is from Andrea Teran, and uh, she's asking about uh, the length of existence of those Amia villages. So, yeah. matagal na ba sila, and until when will they be receiving support? And can we look into climate-induced migration case studies in AMIA villages? It's a ah, very okay. good question. Yes, ma'am. Thank you for the question. But I, I would like to uh, clarify now that AMIA villages were established as a show showcase for the uh, uh, in, uh, where where there is uh, farmers would be learning uh, and apply the most uh, applicable. Uh, adaptation practices. So farmers would like to do some adaptation, but they do not have the capacity to do so. So we help them uh, to try out different options, and then if they have, they were able to identify which one is uh, applicable, then it is the one that they'll be, they'll be doing later on that they will be practicing uh, 
uh, considering their vulnerabilities uh, in the area. Uh, it is not uh, seen as a continuous uh, support. No, uh, we have helped farmers uh, in for one season. So for that one season, we have uh, already showed them uh, which uh, CRA option is available. Now, uh, but but uh, uh, there are instances when even after one season, since this community has already uh, established a uh, an organ like an organization, they can still avail of BA support services, uh, uh, which are made available for for groups, farmers groups. So, mm -hmm. ang, ang pinaka ano dun, um, is for the farmers to learn, no? Mat matuto sila at ma apply kung ano yung mga options, tamang adaptation options that uh, they should be doing, and then we link them with other uh, units within the DA, like kung sa rice program yan, then maybe they can avail of, of uh, not only the seeds, the, the binhe, but also uh, machineries. No, If they are a co-op or a, a group already, they be, be qualified to um, receive these other support services. High value crops, livestock support they are given. I, I would like to invite you not to, to check out our page, uh, the Adaptation and Mitigation Initiative in Agriculture page, where we feature our AMIA intervention in the regions. No? Uh, every now and then, may mga uh, posts kami about what happens in the regions. Okay. So thank you, Ma'am Perla, for the clarification. And also, these are showpiece villages. Mm -hmm. And which mm -hmm. we would like to expand, no? Kasi ito, okay, that's, um, a, good, yeah, that's yeah. a good plan, Ma'am, yung expansion. Yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah, yeah. Kasi for adaptation to be effective, it must mm -hmm. be done in a wide scale. So ito yung... Mm -hmm. So after having these models, then other communities can learn from this uh, group. Mm -hmm. that's, and that's a good point. That's what that's now uh, the basis for expansion. At ito is consistent dun sa trust ng ating secretary kasi sa Amia villages we do it in about a uh, 100 hectares no community na, na farmland or area yan no. So uh, it could serve as a core no for doing the clustering which expands now to 200 to 1000 hectares. So kung mas maraming Amia villages kasi ito usually covers three two barangays only but if could we're now with the we have scaled up the AMIA to AMIA Create or the uh, Climate Resilient Agri-Fisheries Technology-Based Enterprises. So, so from livelihoods, we are now expanding into um, enterprises. And from okay. villages, we are, we are scaling up to municipalities, provinces, and then the regions. That's the trajectory that we are looking right now. That's very good to hear, ma'am. Ma'am, if uh, I may uh, just... A request for clarification because your in 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 your slide on the points for CIS implementation, yung sa actors you mentioned there that the translation is care of um, local actors and you you name those local actors as the CSOs, the LGUs, and the AEWs, uh, which I assume you re you're referring to agricultural extension workers yes however uh, um the reality is they need capacity building i know because you are dealing here with uh technical information yes uh, so yes yes ano yung interventions po sa baba to make sure that uh yung translation will be accurate the translation will be um uh, you know comprehensible too but more than that, yung accuracy dapat ano? Yes. Uh -huh. Ensure natin. Can can yes. you uh, expound on this, ma'am? Uh, we have tried that uh, to to do this to bridge this, no? And uh, sabi ko nga meron ng na develop na na manual, no? Where uh, kung yung type of uh, forecast given by Pagasa is already uh, translated into a layman uh, language, no? Uh, and then uh, corresponding to that is the CRA option or yung risk management options nila. So maliwanag na doon and, and this was generated with the consultation with, with experts' opinion. Nagpool sila ng, ng mga experts on this. So 
tapat-tapat na yan. Kung ganito ang ulan, ito ang crop mo, ito ang, ang mangyayari sa'yo, ito yung option mo. So, mayroon na kaming tinry na ilatag for that uh, case. Mm -hmm. And so, itong na ngayon, yung ibibigay natin sa local government, no? At yun naman ay uh, uh, mapag-aaralan din. Dahil may intervention din naman kami sa capacitating the LGUs, no? At uh, ito ngayon, although meron nga kaming gap, we are trying to do this with our case in point lang, yung our uh, CSO partner, no? Mm -hmm. na yung R1. Ngayon, sa Lukuyang, ginagawa nila ito sa Iloilo, Gimaras, and uh, Antique. So, mm -hmm. meron tayong kapartner pa rin na CSO na dahil kami, wala kaming uh, exten extension agents, no? So, they are there na we have seen naman their their framework their mm -hmm. their mod um, methodology and it's really one that is uh, applicable sa baba so may hand holding may hindi mm -hmm. lang basta ibibigay yung information but may may hand holding uh, practice diyan na tinitingnan nila sa sa papel and then tinitingnan din nila anong nangyayari sa field and based mm -hmm. on those actual and and projected they come up with the right uh nata translate nila na apply mm -hmm. nila yung mga mm -hmm. information okay thank you very much ma'am so moving on to other uh questions um okay this this one is from um Annie Flor Uliero, one of our FB viewers. How will the communication strategies on climate slash weather reach the communities farmers immediately? Do we have groups or organizations that will do this for the farmers? I think na na answer ito ni na no ating mga um reactors in their uh presentation. However, um ma'am, our um reactor from the Pag-asa, would you like to expound more on this? And also, Ma'am Perla, later on. So, Ma'am Thelma, kayo po muna, and then we can go to Ma'am Ma Perla. Yeah. Uh, yes. One of, uh, uh, one of the uh, good practice is the Climate Field School, mm -hmm. wherein uh, the farmers uh, can uh, have a network with our fellow farmers together with the extension workers and also uh, the trainings uh, were conducted to educate the the farmers as well as AEWs on the use of uh, weather and climate information so that is one and also uh, engaging with the NGOs like R1 and uh, that Mom Perla was uh, telling and partnering with other uh, civil society uh, organizations so that we could reach more uh, farmers. Thank you very much, Mom. Mom Perla, would you like to add? Uh, yes. Um... Uh, that's the the one that we're doing uh, no, through climate field schools, <clears throat> through training. Um, and uh, may ginagawa ngayon ng ATI no, that they also text no, para nag, nag send sila rin ng advisories. So mm -hmm. it's through text. But uh, mind you, mahirap talaga if we are on individual uh, basis, no, pag, pag individual farmers ang pinatarget, ang kinikater. It's really good for us to organize our farmers para yeah. um, isa lang yung con contact the, the leader and then sila na ngayon ang magde-disseminate on that no mm -hmm. uh yung partner namin they have already also uh taken an extra mile para magkagawa ng SMS no nag-program din sila para makagawa ng SMS but then you know mm -hmm. ang problema rin natin sa baba yung signal or yung signal. load no mm -hmm. so kuminsan ite-text nila iba na pala may hawak ng telepono o, o iba na naman ang signal right. so talagang uh, uh, it's it's really it really needs some uh, improvement pa but ngayon paper based pa kami pero pag nakakarating naman sa municipio ang 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 advisory ng region 
then yung region naman ang nagpi-print mo nito. Ah, uh, yeah. dun sa face namin sa Pamplona, they appreciate yung paper eh na pinapadala kasi 10-day forecast naman 'yan, so hindi naman siya nagiging stale kaagad. So pag mm -hmm. na na, na deliver from from the region to the Pamplona to the municipality, tapos yung mao nila ron, they will take Uh, to print it and distribute it to their farmers na. Mm -hmm. So, na-appreciate yun ng farmers. Mm -hmm. And also, uh, you, you mentioned about text messages, no? The the Benguet Household Survey uh, conducted by the team showed that by the team showed that uh, yung mobile kasi is only third, no? Uh, as a source of info. So, mas ang, ang talagang dominant source of info that they found was radio, tama ba? Second yeah. was TV, television, and third was mobile. But uh, for radio, talagang hindi mo makukuha yung localized kasi uh, malaki ang scope ng, ng radio. Ano? Uh, but kung from from the Municipal Agricultural Office, kung na-translate nila yon yung mm -hmm. DRR na merong yung radio na over-over, mm -hmm. yun, pwede rin naman yon na nagagamit mm -hmm. din for dissemination. Okay. Okay. Um, thank you, ma'am. So we have a question here for Dr. Domingo. No, uh, it's it's about the crop uh, crop climate calendar, because uh, Sunny, you mentioned about the the CCC for cabbage, for carrots, and potatoes, sabinget, and he's asking Sonia Acido is asking if there is also a climate uh, crop climate calendar for rice. Peron ba daw Sunny? Well, yes, uh, Sheila. Unfortunately, it's with UPLB. Uh, we divided the taste study sites for PIDS. We worked on high value crops. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And for UPLB, they focused on the staples, rice and corn. So they have one for, for rice. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Sunny. Um, okay, and um, let me go back to our uh, shot box. Uh, because we only have a few minutes left for our open forum. Okay. Um, um, Sunny, I'm, I'm not sure if you would like to answer this, but I think you mentioned a bit on this, uh, on, on your study, although this was, I think, uh, assigned to another partner institution. J.R. Ragub, uh, just, uh, he just wants some clarification on why, why was later drop in the study. Okay, uh, it was a project management decision post uh, midterm review. And essentially, uh, there was practical grounding to that uh, eventual decision to drop later. Our partner, uh, who was based uh, within that area, actually retired. And she was with um, DAATI. So although right now we are still uh, engaging with uh, with the project, um, that key person before retired and transferred their responsibilities to to another ATI uh, staff. So okay. in terms of us coordinating and working with them, it was uh, easier to just focus on two key study sites. Thank you, Sunny. As our last question, uh, we have here a um, a very insightful one from Jennifer Deloria, one of our WebEx participants, and he would like to explore. Um, he's asking some thoughts on how we could ex uh, explore further um, to understand the implementation framework of the various initiatives or programs uh, under related to um, climate change uh, adaptation and, and mitigation and related also to the delivery of uh, uh, climate and weather information. Perhaps, uh, Sunny, you can answer this. Uh, what are your thoughts on, you know, strengthening the, the collaboration of the different agencies coming up with synergy, you know, more cohesive and more harmonize uh, plans and programs across the different uh, agencies involved in this initiative. Yeah, um, well, probably let's ground the, the answer to the inputs from our partners from Pagasa and the DA. So if we're going to, to get uh, the sense from those uh, 
comments they have uh, mentioned earlier, you'll find that uh, they are pretty much open to suggestions and they are doing their part in mm -hmm. terms of That's right. actually grounding supposed uh, recommendations. And I think bottom line is um, in terms of the bureaucracy, in terms of all the actors within the bureaucracy, probably the key actors within the bureaucracy, we know what to do uh, with regard mm -hmm. to certain climate information and on how to transmit such to our end users, composed of farmers and change agents. The problem really is that gap, you know, as I mentioned earlier, and that was the anchor for, for this project, how to bridge the gap between that source of information and the eventual user. So we had to start with actually learning about the landscape. What do we have right now? What is the state of the art in terms of mm -hmm. products and services that we have? What is the profile of our target end users, uh, farmers, extension agents? Eventually, how do we value the information in terms of agricultural productivity? So uh, those three actually were answered through this project. And I guess if we are going to, to harmonize, for example, initiatives from all the institutions in government, I think those three are, are, are anchor. So the good thing is, uh, I think we understand the barriers and we know the opportunities in terms of us using better agromet products, weather and climate information in terms of productivity options in our farms. The problem is uh, how do we manifest uh, the mm -hmm. impact of such use in actual productivity? Mm -hmm on farm and off farm. So off farm, that includes the traders, those operating within the value chains. So yeah, it's it's a very general answer, uh, requiring probably uh, simple detailed solutions, but that's what mm -hmm. we are lacking right now. Um, localization, I guess, has been mentioned so many times during this webinar. And I think that is the, the final message. We have to localize. We have to localize mm -hmm. information we have mm -hmm. to ensure that such information are locally applicable, locally yes. practical in terms of adaptation mm -hmm. to eventual end users. And then there should be local um, uh, dissemination effort through various means, you know, uh, targeting our eventual users. So that's why we also conducted the social network analysis mm -hmm. for us to look at how uh, individuals within communities interact. How do they mm -hmm. transfer information or share information? And then there are the more traditional media, as you mentioned earlier, radio, television, mm -hmm. uh, cell phones, and now probably the use of laptops, given as well the yeah. requirements mm -hmm. that given the small kids within households. So now they have more options and probably better connectivity as we are more conscious about having such yeah. in communities. Mm -hmm. So that's my answer, Sheila. Thank you very much, Sunny. Okay, uh, we have a for our final question from Facebook, and this one is from Enri Vasquez, and would like to direct this to our um, discussion from Pagasa. Okay, uh, Ma'am Thelma, um, from MJ Vasquez, he's asking about uh, re reliability of forecasting rainfall in the country. When is the possible time that the forecast can be reliable, specifically regarding rainfall and how? Um, any thoughts on this, uh, Ma'am Thelma? And uh, this also can serve as your final words uh, before we end the open forum, if you have any for our audience. Ma'am Thelms? Yeah. In, uh, as I said earlier, reliability in terms of rainfall is <clears throat> uh, low, but then now it's been increasing. And the capacity that Pagasa has uh, when we acquire our uh, high performance computing facility, uh, we can do probabilistic because in terms of rainfall, you have to understand the uncertainty. It may or the chance. So if we issue the probabilistic rainfall, then it's more relatable in terms of what uh, actions you would do if you have an 80% chance of having a uh, heavy rainfall tomorrow or uh, no rain tomorrow. So we are towards the probabilistic uh, issuing probabilistic rainfall. And now, uh, as I said earlier, uh, 
we are already issuing our regional offices are e issuing the color coded so that is for good for like uh, for the now casting but for a five day forecast we can do uh, in the near future the probabilistic rainfall forecast thank you very much ma'am Thelma and uh, if I may also ask uh, ma'am Perla for this uh, final question for you ma'am uh, and uh, is it possible for you to turn on your your uh, video this time so that our audience can see you so this one is from Roy Bautista, and he's asking if we also use the CIS or the Climate Information Service in relation to the drought cycle of the Philippines. Uh, with the would appreciate your response to this and any final words that you may have for our audience, ma'am. Ma'am Films? I mean, ma'am Perla. Oh, I'm sorry, Ayan. I thought I'm sorry I did not get the no the, the question. The question, mm -hmm. ma'am. Okay, uh, uh, this is from Roy Bautista, and he's asking uh -oh. about uh, the use. If uh -oh. if the DA is using uh, the CIS or the Climate Information Service in relation mm -hmm. to the drought in the Philippines. Drought. Yeah. And uh, yes, ma'am. And also, if you have any final words, ma'am, uh, sa ating audience. Okay. Go ahead. Bro. Um. Of course, uh, anything about the forecast, we rely on pag-asa. No? So, uh, since this is a cyclical phenomenon, uh, DA has come up with uh, uh, measures of what, should, what we should be doing if in this kind of uh, events. No? But uh, 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 climate information service it's it's part no it's part of the uh, the advice that we give that we use also no uh, but basically we get the information from pagasa and as i have mentioned i've been mentioning uh, r1 earlier uh, uh, we partner with r1 but uh, r1 is also a partner of pagasa so they are the ones closely working together uh, giving the inputs from our sources uh, from the aws in the area and then uh, pagasa translates this and uh, gives it back to us and then uh, saka naman ito disseminate yes cis is part but uh, since uh, kung yung el nino or uh, El, El Nino nga, or, or drought, no, is uh, na, na po foresee naman natin yan matagal, medyo matagal, slow onset siya. So we have uh, ready uh, interventions for that purpose. Ayun po. Salamat, Ma'am Perla. Unfortunately, we don't have uh, much time to uh, dwell on the other aspects of the project, but uh, if I may uh, just ask uh, Dr. Out Tabuga, Aubrey Tabuga, for a few words regarding this net social network analysis that she conducted for the project and how she thinks this can help beef up the dissemination efforts of uh, Pagasa and, and, and the VA when it comes to climate and weather information. Al, um, some uh, brief words, please. Yes, yes, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Shear, um, for um, that for including me in this discussion. Um, yes, the social network analysis was meant to complement the overall framework of the study. And its main objective really is how to further bridge the gap between information producers and information users or the farmer. So what we, the idea is there are social norms within the communities that program implementers and system workers already use when they are formulating their strategies. So our study, um, the, the main results of the study or the main insights that we provide from the study is that different communities have different social structures. And uh, as mentioned by Dr. Sunny Domingo a while ago, it's important that we localize our strategies in terms of information dissemination. And not just for information dissemination, but also in terms of social influencing, because that's where um, local influencers come in. So I've heard from DA and Pagasa that they are looking for strategies for disseminating information 
more effectively and even influencing farmers to be more scientifically oriented in terms of their decisions. So our recommendations from the study, recommendations from the study were um, to input in the analysis, in the discussion or in the consultations with farmers, um, how they can incentivize the local influencers so that they can really act as in disseminators in their um, circles, social circles. And mm -hmm. we also recommended for agricultural extension workers and other program implementers at the local level to focus more on people who are on the peripheries because there are a lot of isolated places in areas like Benguet. So in in areas where in must connected in communities, so they can just target the local influencers there. So in our study, we, pro we provided how they can identify um, these local influencers based on the, the case studies that we did in Benguet. So basically, uh, what we found there is that the local influencers or the more central actors seem to be those who can roam around the area. So those are those, the people who have means to, for mobility, and then um, people who are also near um, center or venues of congregation, they are also more likely to be more, more central. We define more central as those who are well connected within the society. So when you target them, they have lots of, of contacts and they can spread information uh, more effectively. So you can do that in the connected areas or, or the communities that have connections. but there are a lot of isolated areas in Benguet, and so agricultural extension workers can design different approach for them, like they can go there more frequently than they used to. We found that agricultural extension workers have been more effective in, say, reaching areas in like proper Pauai, who is near the, the center of activities or business district. Ganyan. But there is a variation of that when it comes to the more isolated areas like Macpas, they tend to reach people clusters lang siya um they, hindi siya scattered so hindi nakukuha yung mga nasa periphery so they have okay. yeah so, so th those are the insights that we've gained and um yeah so social networks are very influential not only in information dissemination also in for in helping people to be more resilient so okay so those were the insights that we've uh, from the studies here. Thank you. Th thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tabuga. I uh, uh, would like to hear more about uh, your portion of the study in, in, in another webinar, uh, perhaps next year. No? Okay, so uh, Dr. Reyes is uh, jumping to another meeting, but before I let her go, uh, Ma'am Sel, um, may I uh, request uh, some words from you po, uh, as part of the being part of this project? Mamsel, are you still around? Okay, I think she is already attending uh, another meeting. So, okay. So, friends, at this point, uh, please uh, join me in thanking our speakers our uh, resource speakers from PIDS, Dr. Sunny Domingo, also uh, Dr. Obi Tabuga and uh, Dr. Celia Reyes, our um, guest from um, ACR, from uh, Sardi, uh, Dr. Peter Hyman, also our expert from Pagasa, uh, Ms. Uh, Perla Baltasar, and our um, discussant expert from uh, the DA, Ms. Uh, Thelma Cinco. Let's give them a big hand, a big virtual clap. Okay, and thanks also to those who participated in our Q&A. So reflecting on the discussion, uh, one important uh, thing that we can uh, glean from our discussion is the need to strengthen, of, strengthen our human capital. Uh, to improve um, their capacity to adapt to the uh, impact of risk factors such as uh, disruptive weather. So we have also to, we also need to intensify our research and development as, as well as our information and education efforts as well as our extension 
um, and outreach services for farmers, keeping in mind the specific needs of our farming communities. And of course, it is also important to capacitate our change agents, our extension workers with the knowledge and skills that will help improve the effectiveness and efficiency of their services to, to farmers. Okay, so friends, at this point, I would like to announce uh, the two winners of our poll. Okay, and their names are J.R. Ragud and Lawrence Daniel Lumen. So J.R. and Lawrence, each of you will receive this uh, PIDS notebook. So we will get in touch with you uh, for your uh, mailing address and and also the names of the five um, five participants uh, that you will nominate to attend our webinar on October 22. Okay, so friends, just a few reminders before we uh, finally close our webinar. So you may download copies of the presentation from the link which is flash on the screen. So that's the link to our uh, uh, events or seminar page in our website. And also, next slide please. Okay, and also as um, we have been we have been saying in our past webinars, please also answer the feedback survey that will pop on your screen after um, this uh, webinar. So the link is on your screen, but at the same time we will email you as a remind uh, to remind you of to, to answer the survey and also. Please uh, don't forget to uh, visit our website regularly and also follow our social media pages. Again, thank you to all our Facebook, uh, regular Facebook viewers. And uh, we have, we are also live tweeting all our events. Uh, so please also follow our Twitter page. So our next webinar will be on October 22. That's uh, next week, um, next Thursday, and uh, do uh, watch us again because this is an exciting, this is a really relevant uh, topic. Uh, this is the result, the, uh, we will be presenting the results of the PIDS study, which examined the design and conduct of the performance-based bonus scheme or the PBB scheme. And finally, we would like to thank um, all the agencies, all the organizations, offices from government, civil, uh, civil society, private sector, academe, and also the international organizations um, that supported us in this webinar. Um, those who have sent representatives to participate in this web in this webinar, maraming um, salamat po. You can see the names of uh, those offices on the screen and we will also um, keep them until the end, keep those slides until the end of the webinar. So friends, at this point, uh, we thank you for your time today and um, we would like, we hope, hope we will see you again next week, next Thursday. So, Please always stay safe and healthy and stay informed too. So thank you very much again and stay stay safe and healthy and enjoy the rest of your day. Maraming salamat po.